Thanks, Shafi. Uh, as Shafi said, I work at the Carrington Research Center. I know the... Hello, can you hear me now? Uh, I'll be talking today about the economics of the nitrogen source and rates in the long term crop system that we have at the research center. Uh, Carrington is located on the central east region of North Dakota. Uh, <clears throat> and this, uh, the research center has around uh, 1,700 acres. And we have, uh, this is just a map of all the fields that we have at the research center. And today we're going to be talking about the research, uh, the cropping systems. Uh, Well, the cropping systems uh, was a project that was starting in 1987 and takes up around 50 acres uh, in the research center. Um, and it uh, consists of uh, cycles, different cycles of three different 40 year crop rotations and involves tillage system, um, fertility treatment, and fruit replicate. Uh, it sounds kind of a little complicated. Uh, but here, uh, we can see on this picture here the three replications and all the, the main plots in each replication. And the main plots, they are the crops, uh, the different crops and the crop rotations. And <clears throat> looking in each crop rotation, for each crop rotation, for example, rotation one, each phase of this rotation is planned every single year. So that's why, <clears throat> if you look here, rotation one, we can have uh, wheat, sunflower, barley, and soybean. All those phases are uh, present in every single year. Uh, <clears throat> on top of the, the crop rotations, or the plots, the crop plots, uh, we have the tillage treatments from the run on north-south direction. Uh, we have uh, conventional tillage, a minimum tillage, and no tillage. <clears throat> uh, and another uh, layer of treatments that we have here are the fertility treatments that runs uh, east-west. So. We have a treatment that has zero nitrogen. Um, another treatment that has 50 pounds for nitrogen per acre. Another one for 100 pounds for nitrogen per acre. And the last one is a, a feedlot uh, compost manure that <coughs> that's applied uh, once every four years. And it's applied a rate of 200 pounds of nitrogen, available nitrogen uh, per acre. The, the nitrogen uh, treatment is applied every single year for the non legume crops. And the manure compost, again, is applied just once every year, and there is no more fertilizer added to those plots. So, in general, what we have seen uh, throughout the years on this study is that tillage and fertility treatments are the main factors affecting uh, yield and all the other uh, measurements they are taking this uh, study. So we, <clears throat> last year we started looking at some of the economics of this system and the way that we're doing this, we're looking at the economics of each uh, fertility treatment inside of uh, the different uh, tillage systems. So, for example, here we have all the the tillage systems and the fertility treatments. So, and these are some of the uh, the things that we are taking in consideration when we calculate the economics analysis, uh, like the cost fertilizer, tillage, seeding, chemicals, uh, harvesting, combining, and so on. <clears throat> so. The way that we're looking at the economics on this system is uh, 
we are assuming two different, different scenarios. The scenario one, where you or, your, or the producer, he owns this compost and he pays only to apply it or to, to haul and apply it to his field. On scenario two, where you or the producer buy this compost from a neighbor or somebody else and you're paying uh, based on the amount of the nitrogen on this product and the cost of the nitrogen is the same than you would pay for uh, commercial fertilizer. So, and these are just some of the, the prices that you use along the years uh, from 2008 to 2014 for the different crops. Uh, and here we have, uh, based on the protein content, we classify the barley as feed, feed or mountain barley. If the barley was, had more than 12% of the protein, it was classified as feed. And if it has less, so it's classified uh, mountain barley. So why, that's why we have two different prices here. And for the spring wheat, uh, we took in consideration an average uh, penalty of eight cents for each one, one fifth percent when the protein content was below 14%. So that has a, a huge impact, especially for the uh, compost treatment. Uh, looking at the data, uh, this for barley from 2009 to 2014. And on top here, you see the yield data on the bottom, the net income for that period. Uh, when you look uh, on the yield data, there is response, barley response to nitrogen applications, but there was no difference between uh, rates or source of the, nit of the nitrogen. When you look <coughs> at the net income data, we can see that uh, the compost manure treatment of both uh, scenario one and two, most of the time, they had similar income to the best treatment, the other best treatment or the best uh, other sources of nitrogen. And if you look here, uh, when you apply 100 pounds of nitrogen, the net income is very low because that rate of the nitrogen bumps up with the, nit the protein content and the price of the barley goes down, so the net income is really low. Uh, <clears throat> when you look corn, when you look yield data, basically the same behavior than barley. <clears throat> there's no there are response to nitrogen application, but there is no difference between rate and uh, source of the nitrogen. <clears throat> And again, uh, uh, the compost treatment when you own it on the, the compost is always the best treatment. It's the best or give you the highest uh, net income. And sometimes then even when you're, you're paying for this uh, compost, you still have the best uh, income. Uh, <clears throat> when you look at the piece, to the piece, uh, they, we don't apply the, the nitrogen to this treatment. So uh, here it behaves basically like the, the zero nitrogen, but there is a response to the compost application. And we look, when we look at, again, the economics of the system, uh, <clears throat> the net income, the compost treatment, has the best net income. And again, we are looking at average about seven years. It's just, uh, the compost is the same, it's just a different scenario. If you want you own it, you know, you'll pay just the application cost, and the other one, you're paying the application cost, plus all the nitrogen that is on that uh, compost. You're just adding a cost. So <clears throat> again, the field piece here, uh, the compost treatment is the best, uh, has the highest net income in an average of uh, seven years. Uh, Soybean behaves pretty much as <clears throat> the field piece. Uh, 
Uh, <clears throat> we'll, we'll just change a little bit of the, the virus here. And when you go to spring wheat, then it becomes a little different. Uh, it is there is some interaction, <clears throat> interaction between tillage systems and <clears throat> the, rate, uh, the source of nitrogen. Because uh, when you look here on average, there are three different situations uh, where no tillage, conventional tillage, uh, there is no difference when you look at 100 pounds of uh, nitrogen uh, applied as commercial fertilizer and uh, <clears throat> the compost treatment, but there is some difference here on minimal too. And we're still looking to see if we can tease out what's going on here. Uh, when you look at the, the economics, uh, you can see the, the economics, the return is much lower than the other crops. And the difference between the treatments is much uh, lower as well. So, <clears throat> and part of this, it's because when you look at the protein content in the wheat, in the spring wheat, when you apply the compost manure, uh, the protein content is much lower. And that's the part, there's low release of the nitrogen from the compost that is not kind of, not synced off of the need of the crop. So <clears throat> when you're looking, as you uh, remember, I said that we use a, a pen of uh, eight cents per each one fifth uh, protein below 14%. When you look at the discounts on the compost uh, manure treatment, sometimes you're looking at the loss of fit. 50 or more dollars per acre doing the low uh, protein. So, <clears throat> what we have learned from this data, uh, we learned that <clears throat> corn and barley yield, uh, they respond to nitrogen application, uh, but, the, but there was no difference amongst the nitrogen rate or source uh, across the systems. Uh, the compost uh, feedlot manure apply once every four years. It's similar or higher than 100 pounds of nitrogen per acre uh, across tillage and uh, crops, except for the wheat under minimum tillage. And both uh, field peas and soybean show higher yields under the compost treatment. Uh, again, we don't know why. That happen if it's uh, because the uh, micro micro nutrients that are uh, present on the compost, uh, high P levels, or improved soil environment. Maybe it's uh, interaction of all of that, but we don't know yet. <clears throat> uh, the compost um, treatment under scenario one was the most profitable treatment across the tillage system for majority of the crops, uh, except for the spring wheat again. And <clears throat> the spring wheat under compost manure fertilization show lower uh, protein content than the other source of the nitrogen. And again, that has a huge impact uh, on the income uh, from the spring wheat. And <clears throat> what we intend to do based on these results it's looking if you can apply low nitrogen rates uh, to try to uh, boost the protein content on uh, a system where you apply uh, <clears throat> fertile uh, nitrogen as manure uh, for wheat production, for spring wheat production the next year. So <clears throat> with that, uh, I will take any questions that you may have.
Uh, I think one one thing that might be different it's uh, the dynamic of uh, the release of the nitrogen from this compost. Since we are, our weather is generally colder than most part of the country, that might be a little slower over there. Uh, other than that, I'm not sure if you could, what you could say about that. So, as I said, uh, uh, <clears throat> the trial is composed, composed of uh, three, four years of rotation. And we apply the compost at the last, or in the first year of those four years. So, it was applied uh, in 2006, I believe, 2010, and we are applying right now this spring. So, and we are applying, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the compost is applied to provide 200 pounds of nitrogen, available nitrogen, on the 40 years period. Uh, I need a clarification on that. Uh, you all saw the testing of phosphorus. Did you saw the test for phosphorus? Yeah, I saw that. So, were you seeing changes in the soil test speed based on the addition of the relative geographic pods? Were you trying to keep positive response? Yes, you can see the difference. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I haven't done a lot for the soil sampling because this is my first year working on this trial. But I was playing around with her, trying to do some. Uh, and the soil fertility map on RTGIS, and you, when you plot the numbers, you can see when the the treatments they go across, and you can see that uh, when you draw the map, you can see the fossil level, and you can clearly identify the treatment where you apply the manure because it has higher P levels in the soil. Okay, so my follow-up question is. No, no, we don't think the, we're not taking at this point the environment issues in account of those economics. What we did is uh, when we look at the cost of uh, manure application, we split that cost for the four crops that are growing on that on that four year period. So that's the way that we look at the cost of nitrogen for the food. And even that, for example, for siding or for the the yield that we don't apply the nitrogen. We kind of charge those crops on the your side, the menu with the cost associated with it. Do you want to read the last question? In most of these fertilizer studies, the data we ignore that zero rate. But isn't it amazing that 27 years later, the corn is yielding 90 bushels per acre with zero applied fertilizer? Correct? Your data shows 2008 to 2014, the zero plot at 90 bushel per acre And I would argue that that's the 
that's the most important data of study, or at least as important the economics. That, that's telling us how much that soil is giving up, whether it's uh, inherent soil fertility or rainwater additions or deeper nitrogen. So, okay, that's something that we need to quit overlooking in these studies. Is that's very valuable information. Yeah. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, we were kind of looking at those things. Every four years, um, we get, uh, we take a solution to 48. So we were looking for the last four cycle cycles. How does that nitrogen is behaving uh, on the soil? But it's still too early for me to tell you anything about the nitrogen. And yeah. I have really worked with the five data. I don't think. 